Everybody, welcome to the regular City Council meeting, Monday, October 10th. Let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everybody, I can't help but say this. I just got a phone call. Jerry and Marsha were going to the cities today, got in a wreck, and they're both in the St. Cloud Hospital. So just keep them in your thoughts. Uh, next, we've got uh, approval of the additions to the agenda. We've got some additional bills for approval. We got an update on project, project financing and bonding, and an update on the sewer connection slash determine when hookups need to be done. So I need a motion to approve those. So moved. So moved. I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Uh, public forum, action may or may not be taken on any issue raised. If council requires more information or time for consideration, the issue will be placed on the agenda of the next regular council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Anybody have anything? Come on, Charlie. Um, my name is Charles Pezzo, go by Charlie Pezzo. I live at 12896 Rushmore Boulevard. If you can please turn on the visual. This is a picture of my property in 2018 of our roadway that it was part of the roadway project. As you can see, the pro in this particular picture, you can see that the roadway did need a lot of work. This is me after the project. At one time, when I would park my pontoon boat, I would never drive uphill. But on Saturday, this past weekend, I had to drive downhill to park my pontoon boat. Another reason we we live at the lowest point of the roadway and we have constant flooding on hard, rainy days. And eventually it does dry up and leaves a debris field close to our property and basement windows. Charlie? Could, could you put the last picture up, and I'd, I'd like to ask a question if I could, please. You said close to your property, so this close is... Close to our basement window. Basement window, okay. I, I, I misunderstood sorry. you then. That's why I Poor wanted to clarify. Words. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Dear City of Cross Lake Mayor and Administrators, now that the assessments have been filed for Rushmore Road Project, we have until October 28th, 2022, to file an appeal. We have been, <clears throat> we have an appeal written up at this point, but will not present the appeal until we have assurances by the City Public Works Commission that there will be a plan in place to fix the drainage issue of our property. Questions? Is the city going to pay for this work? Two, the Public Works Commission does not meet again until November 7th. This date is the last date for us to file appeal to the district court, November 7th. It is too late to know if a fix is going to be completed. Three, can we get a statement from the city that the work, will, the work done will be implemented and paid for by the city so that we do not have to go through the lengths of appealing to the district court? Four, can you give us an idea of what has been discussed at previous meetings as far as any solutions from the public works or the city? 
We are not objecting to the assessment, but we, if we pay it now, we are afraid that we, we are afraid that the work will be put off and not done. And we do not want this issue to drag on. Thank you for your time and consideration. Charles and Margaret Pates. Thank you, Charlie. I'm gonna make a motion that we direct the engineer to correct that problem at the city's expense. I'll Be second. Done with this. I'll second that. Second that? Discussion? Who, who created the problem? Did we, the city, uh, Phil, or did, did the contractor? They no. got a problem. I, I'm not Ray, arguing Ray. that. Yeah. Ray, raising the road, doing the reclaim, where you chewed it up and build the road on top of it, raise the road. They, they relied on draining their property by it running onto the road and into those culverts. So rebuilding that road created part of the barrier that they are facing. So yes. So it's the city issue, it's not a contractor it's, issue? No, it's not. It's raising the road, and I think yeah. us raising the road by building on top of that facilitated them paving their driveway, so essentially the two create a dam for that water. Okay, and you have a fix? Is I know that, you're an engineer. We talked so at the la last public works meeting about coming up with ideas to help them with the water there. Did you talk to the owners about it? Just this morning, okay. or just this afternoon I afternoon called. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But one, one th can I clarify something? Sure. He, you're waiting for a date to make the appeal? So the appeal for your assessment is to go to district court to fight the assessment. If we don't get any information. But I mean, you were talking about something. Well, you mean on the 7th? Yeah, I, I guess the what I'm saying is you, you should, if you intend to appeal, you should appeal regardless. Because you don't want to give up that opportunity. I think the 30 day assessment payment is to save interest rate. And I don't know if you're confusing the two. So. Well, it costs a lot of money to file an appeal. Okay. Okay. More than the interest. Any other discussion on it? The only thing I want to say about it is this. I really feel like this is one of the things with the job that left in their yard. And if we got to dig a trench and put a drain field, do something like that, I think we got to do it. So whatever it takes to eliminate it, and I would ask you to do it before the end of the season, otherwise you're going to have snow melt in the spring, that's going to be a problem. So what if we can't come to a solution with what the property owner wants? Whatever it takes? Yeah. Oh, fix it. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we just open up a checkbook and say whatever it takes. I, there has to be common sense here, folks. I, I'm not going to open the city checkbook up. Well, I think it could be corrected. Without a doubt. On my own yeah. property, I could correct it in a heartbeat, but I might have a different perspective than the property owner. Okay, well, Correct it the best in the simplest way, but correct it so they don't have water going in their basement. If we got a six inch rainfall, they'd really be in trouble. We had a two inch rainfall. As would many people with a six inch rainfall. Yeah, yeah, and it happens, but. Understand, we've changed the drainage. They've changed the drainage. We will try and help them so they don't have to worry about drainage on their property, but okay. within a sensible limit. Yes, Is that please. acceptable? Uh -huh. Yes. So the motion is to correct their water problem. Okay? Yep. Thanks. Any other comments on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries all in favor. Sorry about the pain. <laughs> okay. Next public forum. Who else? Come on up here, Jamie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members, for allowing me this time. My name is Jamie Knapp. I live at 37434 Second Avenue here in Cross Lake. I'm running for city council here, and in 23 short days, the residents of Cross Lake will make their voices heard 
as they cast their votes. I have a heart to maintain Cross Lakes up north character while looking ahead to future planning. I have experience and extensive knowledge. Jamie, let me interrupt you. Yes. Is this a political campaign ad here? No, I don't think so, is it? Am I not well, that? I was just letting people know who I am. Is that okay to do? It seems a little odd at a city council meeting. I don't care. Huh? All right, go ahead. That's why it's called the public forum. Yeah, go ahead. I'm right. sorry to interrupt okay. you. Okay, okay, no worries. I recognize what is expected of being a city council member and I'm ready to serve. I understand the process of annual budgeting, balancing the needs of all city departments and maintaining fiscal responsibility. I've been part of hiring public safety personnel, police chief officers, firefighters, solving economic development challenges, improving bond ratings, listening to the community and asking the tough questions. I'm a problem solver and recognize the need to compromise. I will work for the, <clears throat> work for the people and will represent the people of Cross Lake with the utmost integrity and transparency. I know what it takes and I will hold myself accountable to the people of Cross Lake. There is much left to do in our city and I'm here to let the residents and business owners know that I'm committed to straightforward and transparent communication. I wanna thank you for allowing me this time and I look forward to November 8th. Thanks. Thank you, Jamie. Yep. Mr. Fry. On the uh, public forum here, it says, uh, Action may or may not be taken on any issues raised. I did not hear an issue there. So I would rule that out of order. Oh. Okay. I didn't get the. Well, the political, yeah. Over the dam. Next, Cindy. I just want to say thank you. Um, Cross Lake Days took place the end of September and it was wildly successful. Um, it's a nice display of the hospitality our business community can put out um, when they bind together to do an event like this. I want to thank Patrick for his work with the Public Works. It was nice working with you, having the barricades and the cones and all the things that were necessary for the street dance and the cornhole tournament. Um, thank you, Eric, for cooking chili and having a display from the city in the chili cook-off. It was very successful. TJ had a wonderful event at the community center and it was just, it was a nice display of the city of Cross Lake to thousands of people who enjoyed the event. So thank you. Thank you, Cindy, as always. Anybody else? Okay, we're gonna close public forum. Next is the consent calendar. Uh, anybody have any questions on it? I guess I got one. Where's Chip tonight? Isn't he in here? Did we send firemen to Florida? Yes, we did. One. Okay, this is the first I heard of it. I see there's a bill in here for 910 bucks. Which we'll get, which we'll get reimbursed for. Okay. What part did what part did he go to, or she? I should be. Careful. I'm not certain exactly what part he went to. He will move around a little bit. Fort Myers Beach, probably. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor of the consent calendar? We need to make a motion. Motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Mayor and council members report, we got a resolution, I lost it, accepting donations. I lost it. <laughs> We've got three foundations from, all from the PAL Foundation. One for $609.93 designated to the new playground. One for $528.44 for benches. And one for $39.92 for the banner program. Need a motion to approve that. I move we approve the, the resolution accepting the donations. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All in favor? 
Next, we got a letter from Robert Fry, and I don't know, Bob, yeah, come on up if you want to do this. This is part of our intersection improvement. Right. Got a letter here so you can follow along. Long. We've got them in our packet here. You got the letter? Yep. Oh. Good. Well, uh, I'm just going to read through the bullet points, and if you have any questions, you can stop me or wait till the end. It doesn't matter. I'm submitting a partial list of reasons why to justify my request to install an intersection using smart traffic signal technology for your consideration instead of a roundabout or a traffic circle. Roundabout, the difference is roundabouts are a single lane and a traffic circle is multi-lane, which you don't have room for. I'm not opposed to roundabouts if they're used appropriately. The Cross Lake, City of Cross Lake at that intersection is not an appropriate use of a roundabout. Cross Lake has a natural traffic block there uh, separating the north and south sides and uh, for the reasons I'm going to list um, should be considered for a traffic uh, signal. The traffic signal intersection, well, a signal intersection can be built in the same location as the existing uh, uh, intersection with minimal impact to the surrounding area reducing risk and potential accidents. It also would be built uh, at least partially on federal land and there's a lot of grants that are available for federal use that could also be explored to uh, further uh, fund this intersection. I know the, uh, the Loon Center was uh, granted $8 million and because it's on federal property and, and uh, some other um, things I brought, I've already brought to um, uh, the engineer's attention and the city's attention uh, with, with grants available. The traffic signal intersection can have a better use of real estate with more lanes of traffic, a larger turning radius for large vehicles, and traffic flow. The installation of signals would significantly reduce intersection detours and shutdowns during construction, allowing lanes of traffic to be opened on one side of construction at a time. Instead of taking, uh, shutting down the city, that intersection for days, or months, it could be down, shut down for days. The, um, the parking real estate would not be as impacted with a signaled intersection. Signaled intersections can be cleared of snow easier and faster. Traffic entering downstream for the intersection uh, will have a safer access to the traffic flow on the respective county road because, because of the traffic timing breaks from the signaled intersection, reducing risk and uh, potential accidents. In other words, when you need traffic control, coming off the roundabout would be bumper to bumper. When you get to the gas station or to uh, Reeds or other businesses that are uh, downstream, somebody would have to stop and allow somebody to come in that would back up uh, traffic all the way back because you don't have natural brakes like you would with a, with a signaled intersection. MnDOT has standard drawing plates and specifications for design, uh, the proven signal designs and Products are readily available with only site-specific survey and layout necessary for construction to begin. Be minimal creative design uh, so that they could uh, get, get going on this right away, which is what their desire is. Mast arms can be incorporated with hinges to easily let oversized loads to the intersection without disconnecting equipment instead of rolling over the top of the uh, roundabout or having other obstructions. Mast arm cameras can monitor, learn, and adjust traffic flows necessary for safe pedestrian and vehicle traffic control. The intersection can be turned to flashing red, yellow during low traffic hours. Left turn flashing arrows can keep uh, turning traffic moving and or controlled depending on traffic conditions. <clears throat> because signal intersections uh, with a wide turning radius and lanes would allow safer passage for semi-trucks and large vehicles to pass along with ATV, UTV, snowmobiles, and other small or slow moving vehicles, reducing risk and potential accidents. Drivers and pedestrians can clearly see the intersection and oncoming traffic from every direction without any uh, decorations and so forth, blocking the view of the lanes, reducing the risk and potential accidents. In other words, drivers get a clear view rather than something that might be obstructed in the middle of a roundabout or or off to the side, that sort of thing. 
Large and small vehicles can easily see and line up in their respective lanes for passage through the intersection in the desired traffic direction. The intersection is a traffic, jo uh, traffic choke dividing the north and south sides of Cross Lake. Backed up or stopped, traffic would significantly hinder emergency services, including ambulance, fire, police, and sheriff departments from getting to the south side of Cross Lake. An EVP or emergency preemptive vehicle system on the mast arms could clear traffic so emergency services can pass through. The intersection would also be wide enough for traffic to move over. The city of Cross Lake has made a significant investment in buildings and equipment. Emergency services could be blocked or significantly hindered from the south side of Cross Lake without the use of signals controlling the traffic. Drivers would be able to see and have space to react appropriately, reducing risk and potential accidents and potential loss of life or property because you get those emergency vehicles through there so much more efficiently. Police and sheriff departments can use the traffic cameras on mass arms to track the direction or chases of, of suspects through the intersections. In other words, they can just go right into the, uh, to the system because uh, you'd have cameras uh, on a smart system, you'd have cameras uh, learning how traffic patterns go. They can use those same uh, cameras to uh, uh, chase um, suspects. Pedestrian handicapped individuals can safely cross a signal intersection with the use of ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act, compliant APS or accessible pedestrian signals, equipment using risk, reducing risk and potential accidents. The equipment not re rely on uh, solar or batteries to operate. Intersection can be appropriately lighted during evening hours, reducing risk and potential accidents and with the same intersections electrical service. Signals, inter signal intersections can be better seen at night and during bad weather conditions, reducing risk and potential accidents. Having smart traffic signals will allow intersection traffic control when is needed most, especially during city events and increased traffic volume times. And smart uh, traffic signal intersections can be integrated with future intersections as the city grows. So these are just a few of the reasons I think it's important that uh, the council would recommend um, going with a signal intersection, smart traffic intersection, rather than a roundabout with a single lane. You turn a, a roundabout, from, uh, we'll turn an intersection from one intersection into four intersections because <laughs> there's four points of entry. Simply moving the intersection downstream won't solve anything. You're gonna have the same problem. Uh, if you do a bypass, um, you're still gonna, Cross Lake is the destination point. It's not something to go around to get someplace else. So generally speaking, this is a, a, a very popular area with a lot of traffic flow, especially uh, during weekends, uh, during the summer months and snowmobile times. So it's for these reasons I'd like you to uh, seriously consider not putting a roundabout in, but, but a traffic signal. Thank you, Bob. Any, any questions? My question is to Phil, and I'm assuming you're looking at all this with your, what you're doing, right? We have lots of information. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Bob. Bob. Has the cost of these things changed any? Uh, I'm sure it has. Everything's gone up, but um, the, well, the last the, one I the technology um, is, is saw and worked with was about seven hundred thousand dollars. That'd be a good deal. That'd be a good deal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you that get, a, if you get a smart system on on mast yeah. arms, that'd be. Uh, I, I, I. It's going to it's going to be over a million. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. But there are grants available too. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, I added an item to the mayor's council members' report, and that's the Cross Lakers want to give us a little update on the sidewalk. Project, I think that's right, Jonathan, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so kind of dovetailing into that, the, the other project that's going to be happening at the same time is a sidewalk on the east side of 66 between uh, County Road 3 and uh, Eagle Ridge, Road is, or, or Bald Eagle Road, Bald Eagle Trail to the north. Um, and then a little bit as it goes over along three to um, 
kind of ace hardware where the trail ends currently. Um, so recently there's been a number of Cross Laker meetings going through some ideas and talking. Um, uh, so what I've kind of got here is just kind of a little idea and I'm bringing this forward because I, in discussions with the county engineer, he seems to be more open to discussing what exactly goes on with some of the sidewalks and how we treat this, the actual roadway, which is refreshing because my experience with county engineers in Hennepin County is not very flexible. So uh, <laughs> sitting on your side of the table talking with county people, um, I, I found it to be a lot, a lot more difficult. But currently um, along 66, uh, we have basically two drive lanes, the southbound, northbound, and a uh, bituminous trail on the, one, on the west side. So the, the, the county is actually considering the two outer lanes as parking, you know, old quotation, parking. Um, if you think of that as parking, then, you know, these could actually be um, painted out into stall areas and treated as parking. The, the design that they would normally do is to have a small strip of grass and then the, um, the sidewalk. So this is kind of what would normally be proposed for this eastern side sidewalk. Um, there are areas, um, like in front of some of the businesses at the northern end of this, that their property and their, their parking and that gets very close to the road currently and to do this might be difficult. So the um, county is actually somewhat open to the fact of uh, interrupting that parking area and bringing the, the curbing out and allowing the, the sidewalk to move out to cur currently what is par parking area. Um, if, um, If you look at that, um, in some areas it makes a little difference, but in other areas it allows for some other opportunities to happen. If you think of the area down by, um, say, Holiday Gas Station, Pine Peaks down in that area, by doing some of that of moving a curb line in and putting in uh, the, the sidewalk in that area, you could make more of a boulevarded setup where um, we're not changing access points to the businesses, but you're making a nicer kind of uh, greener space to go in. Um, if you don't do that, my concern is kind of the, we're gonna end up with a concrete sidewalk in the middle of a bituminous area and you're not really gonna know where the end, uh, where pedestrians end and where uh, vehicles start. So um, introducing something that's green and that in this case, I think can make a, a nicer image, but it can also define pe places and, and make the pedestrian access safer. Um, where it makes maybe more of a difference is if we were to take a constituent like um, where the school is here, Swan Drive, by, by introducing some of these reduction of the actual path that you're having to walk across, it makes much safer here. A pedestrian only has to cross about 28 feet instead of 50 something. Um, they're not coming out behind parked cars or that because they're already out at a new curb line. So it's a much more protected and safe way for pedestrians. Um, and what I think you could allow to happen then is at the northern side of the school where the existing parking of the school is, um, this is just the school entry drive, the post office is Move over that here. down a little bit, Jonathan, who can't oh, see oh, it up there. Sorry. Yeah. We're, uh, yeah, the, the school entry drive is there, um, but that would allow this parking to maybe have access across and a similar access with uh, pedestrian way in the narrowed sense that gives that parking a, a lot more usability to um, Loon Center parking and so on down the road. Being that we get more people that'll need parking in the summer and the school's open, the other is the school's set up for buses, which means it can be set up for larger RVs and other buses that would come to the Loon Center. Um, all of this is doable and somewhat acceptable by the 
the county, but what they need is a buy-in from the council and the city that we are willing to lose parking, which I don't personally see being utilized that much in a lot of these locations except Cross Lake Days or something like that. Um, but they will not entertain any of these ideas without buy-in from you as a council. So um, that's why we're kind of presenting something. It's initial thoughts. Um, it's, it's just kind of a starting point to whether we want to look at some options there. And um, like I say, it's very refreshing that the county is willing to look at this. They just don't want to be the guys who initiate when, it. When someone says, you took out our parking, they don't want to be the ones who are responsible for it. So, um. I think other than Sunday morning church, I, I don't really remember seeing a lot of parking on that road. So, yeah. And we're not going to give it all up. I think what you're asking us to do is just be open to looking at it. Yeah, and maybe, yeah, I guess it's kind of the giving a direction that, that uh, the county will be able to buy into. In saying that we'll be open to look at it, we're right. also saying that we would be open, into, open to giving up some of the parking on the road. Yeah, and, and by the church and some of those areas, you probably wouldn't do any of this. It's, it's very specific locations that I think make sense. Um, and like I say, from, from probably the post office up to, I don't know, Goodwill or something, there's probably no need to change anything on the road. Um, so The critical timing on this is we got 650000 bucks next year or the year after we're going to put into our sidewalks. So we definitely want to look at all the options and how to put it in. I'm in favor of letting the county know we'd like to at least consider this because one of the topics that has been discussed is by decreasing the width of the roadway, you actually can slow people down, which will do yep. a lot to help keep yeah. pedestrians happy. But I thought this was all part of that 66-3 uh, project that was all going to come together under engineering, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it is, be. but this is a little bit outside of the scape, the scope of it. Yeah, no? I, no. We just haven't got that far. We don't have any. Just like the county's saying, this is better coming from the city that you're willing to stack yeah. the bus parking and consider other alternatives. Right. But we would, yeah, his ideas are great. Yeah. So what you're looking from the council yeah. here is just to acknowledge that we would be interested in looking at parking reduction. Yeah, I, think. I mean, and I don't know how that gets gets brought out to them, but it's the uh, but it gets like brought I said, up just if, like this. If I nothing gets done, this is going to be the solution, <laughs> kind of thing. It's going to be park. It's going to be a sidewalk on the east side, just kind of in the standard way of doing it. And I think there's there's the ability to go farther and do more, and especially at some of these intersections and pedestrian crosswalks. And and I'm even that I was surprised uh, with some of the statements from. County engineer of where we could place those crosswalks, which usually needs to be at an intersection of roads, and they have to have you know, all the things. Yeah. But, no, he seems um, real open to looking at yeah. whatever. So you you just want us to say that we would appreciate them looking at this. Yeah, I, I guess these right designs. now we're bringing it to your attention to kind of where where I, this could go from. I there. think I try to want to make a motion on that. That is the motion. I just, I just made a motion that we. That is a motion. Okay. The, the other thing I maybe just want to mention is the, like the conversation on the intersection and that is if, if you're concerned about all of that, show up at the meeting, which sounds like it'll probably be after Thanksgiving when they will have the first of the public meetings, but come to the meeting and express your opinions at that because um, without opinions or without direction, they're going to do what they feel is best. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm so open to design else? change from what we have today. Let me put it that way. We don't have any. No. I'll second it. Right. Okay. okay. We don't have any design to look no. at. No. Can I add one thing? To, can we get Jonathan involved? If, in those meetings, officially? If, if you have time in your busy life. Mike, can we add him to our group? I mean, Phil, was that? Or Phil? Well, well I, we I add think Jonathan to our group? I think you have a group that's well defined right now. And there's other groups, okay. but there's also an opportunity for people like anyone here to submit their thoughts and ideas on the portal. 
so they can be summarized and, and reviewed. One of the things Phil is doing is he's got a ton of comments already in, that, in the comment portal, and we'll be looking at those at our next meeting. We talked about that, right? You were at the meeting, Dave. I was. Um, we talked sure about that. We'd be looking at, at those comments and the public input, and that would help to drive some of the discussion that they're having as the decisions are made. And you know, that same comment holds true for uh, Mr. Frey's comments earlier under the mayor's report, just recently. Okay, so we got a motion and a second on the thing. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, all in favor. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan, thank you much for your interest. How is that worded? How is the motion worded? Can you read it or? No, oh, okay. <laughs> city Council is open to additional designs on our street and how they look. Because I think that's what, that's what we have to be open Please, to. Please, come on up, Pat. Let's get this right. We agreed to give up some parking to have a design that well, I think I think about. what the county engineer Tim Bray is looking for by the November meeting because November fifteenth all this stuff they did a pedestrian study um, on the Thursday before Labor Day and over Labor Day weekend all this information is coming in the middle of November first public meeting as Jonathan said is right after Thanksgiving so by the November council meeting he wants to have a statement from the council that not just looking at other projects, but that you are willing specifically to give up some parking in some areas on the east side of 66. So I think that's an important thing to have in your motion. By November, so we should actually do a resolution. We should amend our no. motion to state that today. Yeah. I but think it needs to state that, that the city is willing to look up giving up some existing parking in certain areas on County Road 66. Mr. Andrews, is that okay if Shar adds Excellent. that to your Thank motion? Excellent, you. Much improved. <laughs> okay, Shar, you got that? Okay. Can I ask Phil a question? Didn't, did you see the parking study that was done three, four years ago by yeah. Whitseth where That's, they said nobody parks in Town Square on the busiest? Yeah, we have all that stuff. Holiday of the year? You have all that, okay. Yeah. All right. So the meaning there's parking there. Yeah, it's not exactly right next door, but I heard shuttles and things like that for the right. Lewin Center. Okay, so how are we going to amend it? So it's so. Is, do we need to vote against her? Is that good? You're good. We're good. All right. Okay, Mr. Linus, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, uh, item E1 is a memo from the clerk talking about monuments at the cemetery. Um, the question we get the most when someone wants to put a monument out in the cemetery for their loved one is we encourage them to comply with Rule 21, which talks about what you can put out there, the size, where it has to fit, and the procedure as such. So what happened here, and I'll just read it to you, is on October 3rd, 2022, the memorial bench for Pat Devaney that was approved by the council on June 8th of 22 was installed at the cemetery. Ms. Devaney sat on her bench, which she was so happy to have, and saw another bench that was newly installed. She called me and I was surprised to hear this. Attached are photos. Jim and Diane Galloway purchased six cemetery lots on March 1st, 2021. Mr. Galloway told me he wanted to put a bench there. I told him that benches were not allowed, that he would need approval from the council to do so, to do that. A copy of the rules and regulations are given to every person that purchases a lot in the cemetery, copy attached. I have not heard from the Galloways regarding the matter since then. The city was not contacted to do a staking, which ensures the monument is placed in the correct location, nor was a staking fee collected. Um, so the clerk is looking for council direction on how to address this situation. Um, part of the issue is, is the, is the monument in the right place in relation to the, where the grave sites are? That's one issue. And the other issue is, if you remember back in uh, um, June, we had a lot of discussion on uh, Rule 21 back here that talks about um, the size of items you can put there. And I'm just going to go put these pictures up on the screen to show you what was approved by Ms. Devaney that went through the council and, and uh, everything was fine. And then... When she went out to look at her bench, she sat on it, and we can show you what she saw. 
So back on June 8th, I think when Mr. Bainey's thing came up, we decided to look again at the cemetery ordinances or what we're gonna allow? We decided to look at them and see if there were any changes that, that were needed to be made, but staff felt the, or, the, the rules were adequate. Let's do them on a as And that we would do them on an as needed basis when certain situations came up, one of which was Ms. Devaney's bench. Now here's the bench that the council looked at and said, yep, we're fine with that. And you can see some of the other headstones around there. It's not much larger than what's already out there. She sat on her bench, and this is what's across from it. There's a um, cement platform with a large bench on it, a monument, and a lighted flagpole that just showed up. And Char, you still haven't talked to Jim or Diana? Don't, nothing. Mm, well. So this is the rule that we get all the questions on. City Hall must be contacted before any monument is set. Non-compliance is subject to a fine. Monument measurements may be from ground level to 32 inches high by 12 inches wide by 40 inches long and must fit within the grave site. All monuments must be placed on a concrete base large enough to allow four inches border. Um, and only one upright headstone will be, will be allowed per lot. But to me, the irritating fact about all this is you told them all that and they went ahead and did it. So. A little what the heck letter ought to go out, huh? I mean, what do you do? Sadly, you send out a letter saying you have to conform with the rules. And that's unfortunate, especially when you're dealing with a cemetery and they know what they're supposed to do. I don't like it, but that's where I feel. So do we do a location there to see if it's even close to where it should be? Who we does that? Is that public, public works? Public works, yeah. I mean... We should maybe have Pat go out there and see if it's on It'd the be a right starting point. Sorry, we can go out there tomorrow and make sure it's right where it's supposed to be. If it's, it's going to make it real easy for a decision if it's not in the right spot. Right. Huh. But if you let it go, trust me, it's going to get... Well, I know. So it should be there. Yeah. No. Maybe after this meeting, there might be one or two more. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. It's a, just a family plot or whatever, whatever arrangement. Well, the question is, I mean, whether or not to have rules. Do yeah. we have rules or, we, or do we just right. let people do what they want to do? Okay. That would be easier for me. But then again, how do we enforce the rules? If we're going to have them, how do we enforce them? I mean, if we can't enforce them, we should get rid of them, but we should have some kind of, I don't know that I think that this is really, you know, crazy out there. I don't think I'd necessarily have Char send the letter or Mike. I think it maybe should come to the city attorney. attorney right. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to think about it. The part that bothers me on it is that it's, getting in the way of someone else's vision of what they thought they were going to be able to see when they bought a plot. And it's definitely more than what we say is allowed. I don't know if that's what she meant by this is what I saw. I think what she meant was that's a heck of a lot bigger than the one I just waited for six months to get in. Fair well, enough. And it looks like it's half done. It looks like something else is gonna go on the other side of the flagpole. Too big as well. I think you should send a letter out to them, do a locate, send a letter out and tell them I'd like them to come in and explain that to the council. Like an after the fact permit. Yeah. And planning and zoning and they're... Come in and argue their case. That's what it is. But there isn't it. But it'd be nice to know why didn't you come in and why'd you just charge ahead and do this? I mean, I agree you have to have rules. And I don't know that, how many years have we had these rules? 
long time? I don't know. They've been for that. here longer than that. <laughs> but 1993. Yeah. The rules stay. I don't know. I would have uh, staff write a letter first, and then if you get no answer, then you can go to the attorney. Just tell him to come in and explain what he did. Well, it's kind of a touchy subject. I think we all agree on that. Um, the good thing is nobody's in those spots yet. Um, the other thing is, you know, we went through a lot of consternation with, with public works and then again with the council debating on what we, sh we should let a small, relatively small bench allowed in there. And it was made in an appropriate size to fit in, in that spot in accordance with similar size of monuments that are already out there. And so you can probably understand why we got a phone call when the bench was installed and someone went out in the went out to, to visit her loved one and looks across and sees that, you know, lighted flagpole, what looks to be a partially completed monument and, and uh, complete disregard for the rules that were provided, apparently. So that's why we brought it to the council. And I like Aaron's idea of saying, you know, have, you know, let's find out what happened. Yeah, and I'd like it at a meeting, you know. And if you start allowing flagpoles, Trust me, there'll be other flags up there besides the American flag. Correct. If they're from England, there'll be the British flag flying. If they're from wherever, that's the flag that'll fly. Okay? So I disagree with flagpoles. And that is rule number 29. Yeah, I've read that. Yeah, yeah okay. Okay. Okay, now we have something easy to, to talk about that we've already discussed. Um, there's a memo from me talking about uh, health insurance. Um, we first talked about this at our September 19th uh, special budget council meeting. Um, council direction at that time was to, br re to bring the renewal request to the next regular council meeting for approval, which would be tonight. Um, you were provided with the rate adjustments um, but from this year to next year, which amounted to about 5%. When we looked at what should we budget for, I plugged in a 10% figure because nobody could tell us what the impact of COVID was going to be and how insurance providers are going to respond to that in the future. What we've seen in the past is we've seen a minimum of a 5% increase and as high as about 13 or 14%. So I kind of split the difference and said I'm gonna plug in 10 in the budget. So the budget, the preliminary budget and levy that you approve reflects the rates that are here right now. The good news is they didn't change by more than 5%. The bad news is we have to certify this to our provider by Friday to renew the policy. And it does comply with uh, all of our bargaining unit agreements today. I'll make a motion to direct staff to renew the 2023 health care insurance contract as described in this memo dated October 10th at an increase of 5%. I second it. Okay, any other discussions on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries all in favor. All right, thank you. Um, item three is a resolution for appointment of election judges to serve for the election to be held on November 8th, 2022. Uh, we do this every year. And there's a resolution to every time we have an election, that is, and the clerk keeps a um, list of those election judges, should you want to see them. I move that we accept the uh, appointment of election judges to serve for the general election to be held November 8, 2022. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, the last thing I have is an update on the project uh, financing and funding for the, for the sewer, the clarifiers, and the road projects. Now, we talked, we've been talking about different scenarios for bond issues for the last several months. Um, you know, one of the big things that we decided recently was how we're going to handle assessments, so we've checked the box on that. Um, at our last uh, budget meeting on the 28th, we were able to find some additional funding for the sewer, we got another $35,000 from Soil and Water Conservation, 
and they were uh, able to come up with another grant for about $100,000. Now remember when we started the project, we were in that $500,000, $600,000 range for the storm sewers, but we only had $315,000 of grant funding to do that. So this brings us up to about $450,000 of grant funding. Um, so we're trying to figure out at this point, what will those final costs be? I know Phil has given us a really good estimate and he's got a, got a few more numbers to provide us. And then we can go back to our bond council and say, here's what we need for bond funding to pay for this project. So we're looking at a couple different options and we have an opportunity to save some money on how we do this. We all know that when we issue bonds, we get a bond rating, we have a lot of bond fees and things like that, and we go out in the open market and we say, we think our credit rating is whatever that is, and that's what the, um, the market looks at, and they look at everything else and they say, what should we bid for that offering? What are we willing to pay for that? What we're seeing right now is we all know that the Fed is going to meet in November, we all know what happens to interest rates. So we started looking at uh, the private issuing market, meaning if you can find a um, purchaser through a bank or, or whatever, similar like we've done with um, equipment certificates in the past, we have an, uh, the, the process is the same, it's just a matter of who you sell it to. And so what we're looking at um, late Friday afternoon, was we think we can save about $100,000, maybe just under that, if we can make an arrangement with the private issue rather than um, going the normal method, the conventional method. So to do that, we'll firm up the numbers in the next day or so on what we think we need based on the grant funding we have and the um, projected costs so we can pull the proverbial trigger and come back to the council and say, we need to have a special meeting set up for you either at the end of this week or the first part of next to close a deal with the private issuer before the Fed raises rates on the, on the public market again. So that's where we're at with that. There's an opportunity to do that, so stay tuned. We'll be um, providing that information as soon as we have a more solid number in the next day or two to share with you, okay? Great idea, thank you. So. That's my update on that. And unless you have any questions for me, I have nothing further. No. Thank you. All right. That's it, Mike. Okay, TJ. It's that time again, huh? It's that time. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, item number one was put under my um, section here. I don't know if Aaron wants to speak yep. on that first or? The uh, Public Safety Commission got in discussing sidewalk cleaning and clearing, and I'm not sure which one of the two of you some of it falls under, but there's a new section over by the school. Is that yours for cleaning and maintaining? Uh, last year you directed parks to clear Daggett, and you directed Public Works to clear West Shore and the Trail on 3 over by the assisted living. So that would be... Yeah. Uh, but they, they would like it carried down Swan Drive because it, the city goes and, and plows through there. Those sidewalks go a long ways through there. Yeah. So and I don't know how far you're going. And I think I'm getting it correctly from, the, from there. I think I'm getting it right from the, from the group. I'm not sure if the sidewalk for the school is uh, public somebody, property? Or somebody was going to check with them. Yeah. Weren't they? I'm not sure about that. I know Swan Drive was, was a concern. Yeah. What was the status of that sidewalk by the school? That was the private. They put that in themselves. Yes. So that's privately. So we would not be cleaning it then. Somebody else will have to. But Swan Drive, is that also private? On the south side? The south side, I actually was just looking at the map today, it looks like that is public. That is by, public. Uh, by a custom meat store there? Yeah, up there, but past, on past the, uh, the uh, 
duplexes? We've cleared we've cleared that in the spring for St. Patrick's Day. So I know we've we've snowblowed that and swept it in the spring. So I'm assuming it is public. How did that clearing go last year? That's a bit tough. It's I mean that's the only spot where you can really push snow on Swan right behind the right. meat trap there. So it gets pretty deep. I don't know. Um, how that'd go public works wise, what you what piece of equipment you'd use to clear it, but I think some of that I gathered that some of that uh, when they're clearing the streets we end up covering some of the yeah. sidewalk. Is that oh well, yeah. The yeah. Whole thing. Mm -hmm. well, that's <laughs> I'm assuming. That's where it goes. No. So I don't we don't have an ordinance covering that though, do we? Sidewalk clear. So which ones did you do? Uh, Community Center Road, West Shore Drive. And three. Over by the assisted living? Yeah. Yep, those three. And then Public Works did all around the... Yeah, that's it. They did around the uh, city, town square, yeah. and all that area. That's just in the spring again for St. Patrick's Day. Anchor Point didn't ask for theirs to be cleared? No. Nope. Manhattan Beach? No. You cleared Manhattan Beach once in the spring. Yep, we clear once in the spring to get the ice and junk off. And the, the, what the indication was that as long as you're not breaking stuff and doing it, you're to do it. Correct. Right? Yep. We kind of did it as a test run, too, and it was a very mild winter, and it really didn't take over. So why don't you just do the same thing this year? Same thing as last year? Yeah. Yep, we can. Mm hmm Okay. Huh? Is that... No, that answers my question. As yeah. long, I mean, we haven't heard any more. Or anything. What it is is they're asking for it, and, yeah. and I think they deserved an answer to it. So this gives them an answer. Make a motion. Make a motion, make make a motion. motion that you are charged to clear snow, just as you did in twenty last last winter into this spring. Mm -hmm. I was second. actually going to ask that maybe next meeting. So I'm glad we covered it all. Do we have a second on that? Second. <clears throat> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Huh? No. Motion carries. All right, item two, uh, pretty easy. I got the thumbs up to order a couple batteries for our solar panel for the timing system at the playground. Got the batteries, ended up not working with our system. So I'm just looking at uh, selling those, getting some money back instead of collecting dust in the corner of our garage. So I'm just looking at, we bought it for 170 a piece. Um, we could try to sell them at the 170 a piece, or try to sell them a little bit lower to get rid of them. It's up to the council. What, what are you going to do? Put regular power in there now, or? Oh no, we have we bought different batteries that fit in our box and connected to our solar panel. Everything's done and ready Good. to go. So get what you can get for them. Okay. That a motion? Mm hmm. I'll second it. <laughs> motion is get what you can get for them. Alrighty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, guys. That's all I have. Thank you, TJ. Patrick? All right. The one I got is uh, down at Reeds. They're redoing the parking lot down there, and we have a lift station down there that the water runs over the top of the lift station all the time. And it's busted up blacktop there, so we got a bid for just shy of $4,000. They're going to peel up all the blacktop and then put a swell in it and make the water not run over the top of our lift station anymore. And you have the funds? Well, it's, uh, yeah, we should have the funds. Okay. Then I move that we go ahead and authorize them to. Is that, that seems like an awful lot. It's quite a chunk in there that, it isn't just a little driveway, it's a little wider chunk in there. And they're okay. gonna peel it all up and then relay it back in. And it's tied in with the Reed's blacktop, so we're... And you can't get Reed's to pay for part of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, is it their driveway? No, it's our driveway. It's our mm. property right there. All right, Aaron said go ahead and do it. Second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Carries. Phil is... This is, I think Phil was going to speak about that, weren't you? Or Road I, plans I or something, out. Phil? Are you going to do that? I can start it out. But what we were trying, you're talking about the road plan study updates, right? Yep. We've had a lot of discussion at the staff level and again at Public Works about what roads are we going to do next year? Do we have enough time to do the roads? How much are we going to allocate to do the roads? How are we going to pay for them? 
Um, are we going to assess them? Are we going to not assess them? Should we try to um, worry about the roads we can extend the life on or fix the roads that are really bad? Or, and which ones are those? Um, if everybody remembers, we had a plan a few years ago where we went through and we identified all the roads based on their age and condition and then said, here's what we're going to do and this is the time frame we're going to do it. What we didn't do is we didn't follow our plan. Um, things change, the road conditions change, the way councils change, the way that we felt about them changed, how we paid for them changed. And now it's almost five years later and we've kind of been going on, uh, well, we got to fix this road. We're going to do this area because it was already in the hopper. But now we're at the point where we've got to identify what we want to do. So I think at a minimum, what we, and we've got some funds left in public works to um, do some kind of an assessment to start and inform the council, here's the roads that need the work right now, and these are the ones we can extend their life with. This would be the best bang for the buck for our plan going forward, um, but it doesn't address how, if we're going to follow our existing policy with assessments or just levying for them or not. So what we're looking at, at least from, from the Public Works Commission, is to ask the council to authorize the engineer to take a look at our roads with Patrick and say, here's how much this study is going to cost to figure out which roads we should do when that we can extend their life up on. Does that pretty much summarize what you're trying to do? Mm -hmm. I know Phil's got some comments on that too, and he'll share his comments on the roads that are beyond extending we just, their we're life. We're just going to want clarity. Yeah. Right. So you did this, I think it was in 18, you, you did the first look. Correct. Okay, and the conditions of the road didn't improve unless you worked on some of them. So I guess my perspective is I, I would want to know what what is the city's desire? Is it a, a pavement preservation approach? So that's the most bang for your buck, preserve the roads and still have good pavement life. Or is it a, we owe people, we've told them about roads for a while, they might be more deteriorated, not preservable, but have to be rebuilt? Or is it a balance of the two? Because going out, Patrick and I going out, every road that already was rated as not a preservation road, there's no reason to look at it because it didn't get any better in the last five years. So I'm saying we can streamline our efforts, but I, I I just I, happy to obviously give you what you're looking for, but I want to know what you're looking for. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm thinking is the maintenance, seal coating, preservation, definitely. And do we want to look at some kind of policy where the people approach us and say we want our road done? Or do we just go ahead and identify some roads and do them? That's what I'm asking you. Yeah, so how do you guys feel about that? Should we just let people request it? They're going to pay an assessment. I mean, we've established that. Hopefully, we're not going to change that again. I, I would like to see the preservation as much as we can and pres preserve it where we get the better uh, life so, out of it. So preservation is two things. Yeah. It's going to be your normal maintenance with, yes. with chip seal coat, yep. crack sealing. But then an overlay is a preservation and, but enhancer. Okay. Yeah. And a preservation enhancer, an overlay was considered as an accessible one, but it's a lower assessed right. value versus a reconstruct, which is the, uh, you know, the, which was the four thousand dollar assessment item. Yeah. The reconstruct. The right. the overlay is a thousand dollars. Was a thousand based on our process of market value. Okay, that's what it was. Right. Yeah. So for the last two three years, we've looked at the idea of preservation, the rose best we can. So that was but, at least but I like that style. idea. Preserve as best and as many as we can. If there are roads that are deteriorating, I think we do need to know which ones they are. And then we need to watch them and as I to when we, know we which do ones, it. We know which ones are kind of yeah. at that. Yeah. I think it helps Patrick and I at least go out and focus on the roads. Yeah. We already know are should be in a, a preserve. The ones that are already bad. We tear up equipment, uh, plowing them if they start getting too bad. Uh, officers drive them over them. They're trying to get to some place in a rush, and they're beating up equipment. And 
that doesn't help anything. That doesn't help us. So I, I, I would want say to see something. Schaefer Road is a long road. That's kind of a rough road. I'd say take a look at that. And I similar, just, the little short dead end roads, let them go. I, I, I kind of started this because I received a call from a fellow on two guys on Lake Street. Their road was supposed to be done in 2022 or 18. Mm -hmm. Hadn't heard a thing. Mm -hmm. And I had heard from Tom, and sorry, Tom, I'll mention it in Public Works because they're wrestling with how do we pay for all this stuff? When are we going to do it? I think any group of citizens is welcome to come and ask for the road to be done, but I'm just not so sure I want to jump into, or whoever the new council is, full reclamation and doing what they did to our road, because it's, it, anyways, there's a mess on our road a little bit. But I think the preservation, I haven't heard the techniques, but we need to use more of them. And it might be that people are going to have to drive on a little bumpier road, you know, for a while. Big Pine Trail is a great example yeah. of that. We didn't do that four years ago, and I haven't heard a beep, peep out of anybody about it. To me. And that was supposed to be reconstructed. Maybe we have to experiment with overlays. I don't know. I mean, everybody's told us we have great base soil here. Remind them what the up north cabin is all about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, did you get that direction, Phil? Are you good? Great and Phil. <laughs> so are, are, you, are you asking Phil to identify and come back with a proposal to identify the roads we're just not going to, we're just going to ignore because we can't preserve them? And then here's the ones we think you should preserve and get a schedule put together? Yeah. yeah. How about a motion to update the road plan? Tell us how much it is. Why? It's got to be done anyway, so. So we can put it on the calendar? Well, no, well, well, we the had point one is, from 2018, and then no, we threw it out. We had one that we need something to follow. I, I, the initial one was by age; they sorted it by age, and and they uh, took a look at it. I mean, we need something to look at because we. I'm not. I'm going to sit here and talk on my own behalf. We don't have enough money in there to do anybody's road next year. No. All we got is money in there to do some repairs on old log landing roads. But I'm not advocating that. You go out of here and jump and find five roads to redo next year. We don't have any money. But we need to get that list updated, and that's what I'd like to see done. So what are you going to tell them to do? Go out and take drove the roads and see which ones we've got to maintain? Yes. Give yes. us a report? Update the list. Yeah. 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 Okay. But as Phil said, no need to go look at those that were thought to be in bad shape several years ago. No, no need to repeat that process. You can make, keep them on your list, but I don't think you have to go look at them again. Is that clear enough for you, Phil? Okay. I'm going to second that. Is that a motion? I'll second it. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Clear as mud. Update on sewer connection. That was something added. Determine when hookups need to be done. Who's taking that? I guess Phil's taking that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a number of people hooked up. Tell me less. Um, yeah, I guess that's what you hand well, you, you We don't have it. Just... Can you put it up on the screen? <clears throat> no. no. Okay, so. Okay, I, I can talk about it just to, just briefly. So what I've done is I was tracking, you know, I was tracking this for bonding purposes so I could tell how much of the connection fees we were going to use to reduce the size of the bond issue for the sewer projects. And so don't worry about my, my scribbles on the left. That's just my internal tracking I was coming up with. But Sharp put some of this together with Phil, and we're looking at um, the ones that are in purple and red, are paid and hooked up. The ones that are listed in white that are not colored are ones that have not hooked up. Um, some have paid, some have not, but they're supposed to hook up. 
So what we're really trying to do is communicate to the council, we've collected about $250,000 of connection fees. Some have hooked up, some have not. And we're trying to get a handle on who should be hooking up that hasn't and who still has time to hook up and when we think they will hook up so we can plan for that going forward. The good news is a lot of people have paid and there isn't a lot of money left to collect on it. Um, but there are a number of people that need to hook up. And that's what we're trying to get a, get so a handle on. So if they pay it, are they paying a monthly bill also whether they're hooked up or not? Well, that's a two-part question. If they've paid their fee and they have not hooked up to the sewer, they don't get a monthly bill. Okay. If they've paid their fee and are hooked up to the sewer, they're, paying, they're being billed a monthly yeah. okay. fee. So I think there's 14 or so, I think I counted, that are hooked up. Yes. Out of, and there's some parcels that are vacant that have services, but there's, there was 44 on here or so total. Um, these yellow ones, again, like Mike's saying, they're, the yellow ones are within the window of, if you recall, it was, you get 10 years on your septic system on the 11th year, you're hooked to the city system. Okay, so the yellow ones are still within their, their grace period, the white ones. Um, if they have an existing septic tank, that being that it's not just a vacant lot right now, they have the septic tank. My understanding is the city would gave them one year beyond construction completion to get hooked up. So you have anything that, you know, some, I guess those ones that are in white. We as a city should track that. Like we were talking a, a letter to those properties indicating you have one year to get hooked up. That's, I guess, my perspective. Yeah, we don't want to remind them the day before their, their limit to hook up expires. That, that always ends up in a bad conversation. So one year from, what, September 1st or something? Re yeah, round numbers. I think so yeah, send them a letter next functional June. by then. So. Send them a letter next June if they haven't paid and hooked up. Didn't they get a letter already that would told them all sorts of stuff? Well, we... We before them all sorts of stuff for a right. long time. Can we send the same letter and circle it? <laughs> and then if they don't, if they refuse to pay or to hook up, then what do we do? Start finding them? In phase one, we started billing them monthly. Just billing them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. That's pretty common with other cities yeah. do. If the Give them a year and start billing them. <clears throat> but and none of the letters we sent gave them a firm date of when they had to hook up by. Well, established when it was complete. I was you know. assuming they had, they, we told them about a year. Well, but now we know, you know, we just got to decide what I is think the it, date. It doesn't hurt us to get a letter out. Let's put a firm date out there. Yeah. So if you want to call the 16th, the, give them the benefit of the doubt. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. But Pick a date. You, when do we send the letter? Do we send it now this month so they have a one-year notification, yeah, I'll basically? Put, I'll put a letter together and get it to... I'd say uh, yes, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm okay, good with it. Good? Yeah, I'll more information on the unit. Yeah, okay. Yep. Eric? Good evening. Just a couple updates. Uh, this last week, we started Patrick Martin as a part-time officer. Uh, Patrick comes from Deerwood Police and Cuyuna Police. So he hasn't had a whole lot of training, so he'll be trained for a good month, month and a half, two months uh, before we let him out. So he'll be working with some of our officers over that time. And then he'll be free to go. We're doing a... Uh, background right now on a second officer to hire so we'll come back with that information when that time comes so we talked to about four or five different people and and these two ended up being our top choices are they both so, part-time status no uh the second one that we're doing the background on right now is a fresh uh it'll be a brand new officer so okay but uh we'll see what 
what comes of it. Um, secondly, we got the radar signs and got them last week. Uh, the Public Safety Committee met and it was kind of a general consensus. I asked everyone, I said, what do you want to see? And where they're at. And the general consensus was inside both bridges here on 66, southbound, northbound, 35 zones. Um, that was two of them. One out on County Road 16 in the 50 mile an hour zone coming into town uh, before the bridge between probably Robert Street and the bridge somewhere in there. And the uh, fourth one out on County Road 3 coming south into town by the golf course in the 45 zone there. And we have the other two that are portable that we can move around to West Shore, Anchor Point, Manhattan Beach. Do you have and a lot of trouble on West Shore Drive? Or now that the detour is gone, not so much? It's hit and miss. It's hit and miss. I mean, you'll get someone going through there fairly fast and other times everyone's just kind of enjoying yeah. the drive so um, it's that way pretty much any any street any of those streets but it's always a good reminder if we just put up the portable and leave it up there for a couple weeks so unless uh, you have any other ideas or uh, preferences um, we'll have to talk to the county regarding that because they're all on county roads and they would be a permanent uh, sign there. They, they would be cemented in, concreted, cemented, yeah. And we can't request them from the county. The signs? Yeah. Uh, other cities have done it, but I think they've paid, I'm about 99% sure that they paid for it themselves. And then the county allows it, installation of it, or a state. And you got two on the community center road, one going each way. Yep. I know it's flashing at me all the time. Well, they shouldn't be flashing at you. <laughs> if it's steady it's light. It's a good place for that <laughs> sign. <laughs> flashing bad. <laughs> two dots, real bad. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to go with that one, Mayor. <laughs> so Eric, those signs are telling I you to slow down and speed one, up, Kurt. right? Right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you get it to go blank, that's a really bad thing. So, it, yeah, well, <laughs> All right, we'll leave that said. one alone, too. So I don't know if uh, you want Pat or myself to talk to the county about getting those placed. I'd like to get, it, get them in before it gets uh, frozen out there. Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out. And then secondly, another thing that came up at the uh, Public Safety Committee meeting was the crosswalk at Swan Drive. And so from the school to basically Pine Peaks across Swan, that we needed to have that painted. I think uh, Ted told us that was going to be painted a while ago, and we were just kind of waiting for the all the... Uh, whatever jobs needed to be done down there on the crosswalk when we put in the crosswalk sign. So um, I don't know if we can, if we have money for striping or what's left in the budget. No, we didn't pay for any uh, striping this year that I'm aware of. You have adequate funds to stripe the crosswalk. Okay, perfect. So if we can get that done, I don't know if... Uh, no. If we need to contact yep. the county, if they're striping at all, and up here and they can do that while they're striping. I'm not sure they did that last fall for us. And uh, lastly was the no parking up by Moonlight. And we talked about after the project was over getting that uh, curb painted yellow. West side. West side. East side we're gonna leave. So from 16 down to probably about 50 to 100 feet south of the southern entrance into Moonlight. So we already agreed to do that, but you're asking again, do we still well, agree to do it? I, should we get it done before winter? Should we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now is that part of the project or how do we I, go about doing it? I talked to Phil earlier and he just that's the first he had heard of it. Okay. So it, it'll, we'll have to, yes, from here, but it has, the county has to be approached and 
Where do we go? I don't know if Jory's back or not yet. Not. Is he back? No. He's not, okay. Um, when he comes back, that's who I uh, talked to last year to have the other stuff painted out here. I'd Is he gone on an extended? Do you want to try Tim or Rob and see if they can? Because we're going to run out of time if right. you don't get it going. Sure. Pat and I will talk about it yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I think that's about it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Public forum. Action may or may not be taken on any issue raised. If council requires more information or time for consideration, the issue will be placed on the agenda of a next re council meeting. State your name. Address, anybody have anything? Not seeing any movement, we'll close public forum. Any new business? Any old business? No city attorney? We're looking for that motion, Aaron. Move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.